Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers. Today I want to show you how I made this super easy DIY straight edge guide for my circular saw. It's crazy easy to make this thing, but there are some considerations for the size of your saw, for the thickness of the wood, and for the overall dimensions, and that's what I'll show you. Hey, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over to heartwoodart.com for more helpful tips and tutorials just like this. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, first let me share the names of what I'm calling the parts of this assembly. The big board on the bottom is the baseboard and the skinny one on the top is the guide board. Now the first thing to consider is the thickness of the wood that you want to use. It needs to be based on the size of your circular saw blade and the depth of wood you'll be cutting when you use the guide. The thicker the stock you use for the baseboard, the less cutting depth you'll have for the saw. Now for my five and a half inch Ryobi circular saw, I chose to use one quarter inch plywood for both boards. Now that means my guide will be a bit flexible compared to thicker wood, but the glue up makes it sturdy enough. And the max depth my saw can cut is a two by four, which is actually one and a half inches. But I mainly use my circular saw to cut plywood, and the max depth of that that I use is three quarter inches. So I could go up to a half inch plywood for the baseboard of the guide, but that would put me at the limit for cutting depth. Now, if you have a seven and a half inch saw, you can definitely use one and a half inch plywood for your baseboard. Now, I used one quarter inch plywood for my guide, too. The saw shoe that will ride against the guide is only one quarter inch tall, too, and I keep both hands down on the saw, so this suits me. But if you feel you need a taller guide, then by all means use a thicker board. Next, you'll want to measure your saw shoe or base plate. Now, be sure your saw is unplugged or the battery is out before you do this part. Set the widest part of the plate on some plywood where the edge is free, meaning the blade tips are below the wood, as if you're cutting it. Then lift the blade guard so that you can place the inside of the blade snugly against the edge of the plywood. While holding the saw to ensure it is dead flat on the plywood, measure along the top of the shoe from the edge of the plywood to the outer edge of the shoe. You can see mine is four inches. Write down this measurement, you'll need it later, and all other measurements of the straight edge will be in reference to it. Now for the next set of steps, it'll be helpful to see both cuts. Here we'll determine the full width of both boards. You'll want to make the guide board at least three inches wide, and then you'll need at least another three inches on the baseboard on the opposite side of the guide board for clamping the assembly to the material to be cut. So. When you include the saw shoe at four inches, that will make the whole baseboard at least 10 inches wide. Four inches plus three inches plus three inches. But you'll want to figure in about a half inch longer on the baseboard so you have some board to shave off the edge later. Write down your full width measurement for the baseboard. Mine is 10 and a half inches. Now don't cut this board yet, just write down your measurement. Now, you can have both of these cuts done for you at your home center, but if you have another sheet of plywood laying around that still has a straight factory edge on it or another long straight edge, you can use that. Now, first, we're going to cut the guide board. This is the narrower board that's mounted on top that will serve as a straight guide for the saw. Now, mark the factory edge of your plywood. This edge will serve as the master straight edge. Measure in three inches, or however wide you decided to make your straight edge guide board, and mark it at both ends, and maybe even in the middle if you're creating a long straight edge. Now, from your straight edge line that you just marked, measure and mark another line that is the width of your saw shoe. Mine was four inches. Then lay another sheet of plywood on top of the one that you're cutting with the factory edge on that second line you just marked. This top plywood will serve as your straight edge for this first cut. Go ahead and make the cut, and then set your new guide board aside for now. Next, we're going to cut the baseboard. This is the larger board at the bottom. 
Now measure 10 and a half inches or however wide you want your baseboard to be. And then mark both ends and maybe in the middle if it's long. And then from your straight edge line that you just made, measure and mark another line that is the width of your shoe, minus four inches. You can either use the guide board you just made or the other sheet of plywood you used previously and lay the factory edge on the second line. And then go ahead and make that cut. Next, we're going to glue up the assembly. Lay the guide board on top of the baseboard and place the factory edge of your guide board four and a half inches from the edge of the baseboard, four inches for the saw foot, and then a half inch overage that you'll trim later. Ensure the ends are square. Now you should have three inches of baseboard on the other side of your guide board. Mark a line on the baseboard using the edge of your guide board as a reference so you can put it back in the same place and then remove the guide board and spread wood glue on its underside. Replace the guide board on top of the baseboard with the factory edge square on the reference line that you drew. Use clamps or place heavy objects on the assembly. And then wait 24 hours for the glue to fully dry. Now, if you use three quarter inch wood, you may want to bread nail them together, but for the quarter ply wood, the glue should be sufficient. Okay, next, you're going to cut the excess off the baseboard. So clamp the assembly on a flat surface so that about one inch of the baseboard on the side that's going to be trimmed is hanging over the edge and free to cut. Okay, make sure that you're on the four and a half inch side and place the long side of your circular saw shoe against the factory edge of the guide board and then cut the excess off that baseboard. It should be half an inch. Now the edge of your baseboard is exactly four inches or the width of your saw shoe from the factory edge of your guide board down the entire length. This method ensures that even if you didn't glue your guide board perfectly square to the baseboard, the edges of both are perfectly parallel and you'll always make straight cuts with it. Now since the baseboard is about the same width on each side of the guide board, Consider marking the side where your shoe will rest. I even marked a few arrows on that side in the direction that I'll be cutting to help me remember. And you should always lay your straight edge flat so that it never bows. That's especially true if you used one quarter inch plywood as it is more flexible. And you could also drill a hole through one end about one inch down from the edge and through both boards and hang the assembly on a hook. All right, y'all, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a circular saw guide. Be sure to subscribe to the Heartwood Art YouTube channel and get on my email list so you never miss handy woodworking tips and DIY projects just like this.